Hello, dear. Oh, Hi. hello, Ali. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right, all right. Let me make you a co-host just in case I get into the middle of everything and then all these people start coming in as a, and then you can help me letting of them course. in. Okay? Yeah, of course. I feel like that's the worst. I'm like, I can't accept people fast enough. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I, I am recording this, so I will upload it to my YouTube and send you a link that you can share with uh, with anybody else that perhaps is not attending. Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna make it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna make it very simple because I want to leave most of them to ask for them to ask any questions that they may have. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'll go with the Medicare basics, and although. I don't think I have a slide that talks about HMOs and PPOs. If I forget about mentioning, just make sure you say, hey, Rosie, can you tell us the difference between an HMO and a PPO? And then okay, perfect. that's really all you as a clinic, because most of these ones are, most of the people attending today are um, office managers, right? There are our program coordinators. So they go into the clinic and they help facilitate with like patient scheduling and everything. They mm -hmm. work very closely with office managers. What we were experiencing in the past is sometimes these clinics would come to us with plan specific questions like benefits related to Humana and benefits related to Ultimate. And our team wasn't able to have those conversations because they just didn't know enough. Right, right. Yeah. And perfect. And the thing that they have to learn from this if we the one goal is when they have people that have that. Just tell him, just call Rosie. Just call Rosie. <laughs> Actually has a hashtag. I have a hashtag called just call Rosie. As it's the funniest thing, but if somebody says, I just call Rosie, I just call Rosie. <laughs> so I, I I own it and I say, yeah, just call Rosie. <laughs> okay, I'm admitting people now. Yes. I see that. Okay. okay, go ahead, sweetheart. And I can give you a little introduction to the team when we get started. <laughs> sure, no problem. And I really appreciate this opportunity. Okay, it's just really, really. Thank humbling. you so much that you were able to talk. And you know, after our conversation, I've been working with Dr. Hernandez, and I'm actually I was able. I'm gonna. They're gonna have a, a devoted open house on the 26th. Um, hello. Um, they mm. actually had an old banner from Care Plus that was very like dilapidated so they say you know we've been asking i got that changed for them um so there's some things that we're working on little by little so oh, that's awesome i'm glad something good came from that no and i did get actually a couple that i i helped her the husband and uh the wife i helped this year so the husband i helped last year and the wife i helped this year with just a prescription drug coverage because she's not a good candidate for a Medicaid advantage. And um, I did invite one of my newest uh, agents. Uh, she's just uh, deciding to come on board. So, uh, uh, and you hear? So, if you see somebody's name that that is not one of your team, is is Colleen is my newest agent. So, okay, perfect. I saw her name on there. <laughs> okay, you did. Okay, awesome, awesome. Great. I don't know if we're waiting on some more people. Yeah. Mari, I think we're waiting on Amanda too. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. here. Yes. And then the PPMs. Let me message them. Let me message Colleen too to just make sure. Let me message Shana. We have Orlando. We have Ocala. We have Panhandle. Shane is here. We are all here.
Okay, Francisco, I'll accept you when you come back. <laughs> And would Will it the be PPMs be joining us? Sorry, Rosie. No problem. I'm sorry, Seneha. The PPMs, will they be joining us as well? They're on the invite. And I sent a reminder for everybody yesterday. Okay. And Jackie, FYI is on PTO. Yeah, I saw that. Just sent a reminder. I guess while we wait for them, I'll give you guys a brief introduction. This is Rosie. Rosie is a broker and she very kindly agreed to meet with us today just to go over different plans, the benefits that they offer, just so we can have more nuanced um, conversations with our clinics. I know sometimes you guys do get questions and it's just nice to hear from a broker directly what benefits we have, someone we can collaborate with, things like that. Um, this all kind of emerged with benefit pods and this is how our relationship with Rosie started. So if you guys have any questions throughout this presentation at all, I know she put something together. It's also recorded. We'll send the link out afterwards. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, you know, raise your hand, say anything. That's what this whole thing is, just to help you guys out. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much. And if you guys don't mind, and if it's okay, um, put your information in the chat with your email, just in case uh, in the future, somebody, some of you need to talk, contact me, and I don't have you in my contact list, then sometimes I just send it to voicemail. But I want to be available for you guys. Um, and a little bit about myself. I started with the Medicare industry when I was 12 years old, 20 years ago. <laughs> there was no uh, uh, law on, on working uh, young, but you know, and I don't know how to do anything else other than Medicare. So one of the things that I tell people is I don't do final expenses. I don't do life insurance. I don't do none of that. I do Medicare and I love it because the, I realized that our seniors is a community that is very vulnerable and it needs a leader with a servant heart to serve them. And that's where I started uh, my, my career, started in corporate America with Humana, we all call it Humana University. I worked for them for about four years and I actually was uh, one of the key team leaders that put the Humana, uh, marketing budget for the Hispanic community in the books, because at that time, diversity was not something that they were looking at. So I am really one of those people that carry that flag and says things work different when, when it's the Hispanic community. So it's going to be very simple. I'm going to go with the basics of Medicare right now. So you guys at least have that in your arsenal. Then if I forget, somebody remind me the difference between the HMOs and the PPOs. And then I'll tell you about a little bit about benefits, okay? So I'm going to share my screen and let's see if this is going to work the way uh, it's supposed to work. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So that's my phone number. That is my email. That's actually this thing right here, my text number. So um, anytime that you need something, sometimes it's faster for you guys to send me a text message and you will be able to get uh, to me. But that is all my information, okay? About me, I like I mentioned, I've been doing 20 years of Medicare. I don't know how to do anything else. I lead my community with a servant heart. And there has been some things that have been awarded to me because of that. Uh, for example, one of my brightest joys is that I am, I was, I was uh, um, listed at the 50 most, his, uh, the 50 
Hispan the 50 most influential Hispanic leaders in the state of Florida. And I am also right now currently serving as the treasurer of the Commission on the Status of Women. But next, but hopefully this year, I will, throw in my, I will be throwing my name in the hat for a vice chair position. And if you guys do not know, I'll little, I'll do a little tidbit for that. But look at fcsw.net, fcsw.net, and we advocate for women's issues in the state of Florida. Okay, so who gets Medicare? Who we can help with the Medicare option? People that are turning 65, people that are older than 65, but they are losing Medicare. So perhaps they have delayed their, their retirement and now they're looking for insurance because they no longer have the insurance through the company. Um, they don't know if the company uh, uh, plan is uh, more robust or better than Medicare and they need to enroll in Medicare, they're unhappy with the current uh, coverage, and perhaps people that have disability, because Medicare, after 24 months of somebody being disabled, they get Medicare regardless of the age. So I'll give you a little um, um, thing and see if you guys know this answer, uh, a, a tip. Um, the, do you guys know if Medicare covers pregnancies? So if you think that Medicare does cover pregnancy, put your little hand up. All righty. So, okay. So I tell you, people think, okay, Medicare 65, who's going to get pregnant at that? But Medicare does cover pregnancy because people with disabilities can be perhaps a female that is getting pregnant. And that is a medical necessity, consider a medical necessity. So Medicare will cover that benefit. So, and I learned that after I served a veteran at one point that I did not know that. And she asked me and I said, you know, I want to say no, but let me do the research. And that's how I find that. So everything that I tell you guys today is something that I have experienced with one of my clients. All righty, next thing here. Okay, so we're going to do about the A, B, C's, and D's of Medicare. What is Medicare, first of all? That is this red, white, and blue card that everybody at age 65 gets uh, or somebody with disability. It is the federal health insurance program for U.S. citizens, citizens and legal residents, and they are individuals. So some of the biggest thing that I get asked is, can I put my wife under my Medicare policy? No, it's individual. Your wife will have her own Medicare policy, or my husband or my child. Medicare is not Medicaid. And one of the things I always tell people, Medicare care is your uh, doctor, your hospitals, and Medicaid aid is health. Medicare is government, uh, federal government. Medicaid is based on the state. So if the person that you serve in service today lives in the state of Florida, but they move to the state of Texas, then that person needs to apply for the Medicaid in Texas, but their Medicare will follow in to Texas, okay? And it is not social security. So if people turn 65, but they want to delay their social security benefits. So that monthly, that, that monthly uh, uh, payment benefit, they can, but Medicare is not delayed. And it does not, it, you don't have to collect social security to get Medicare, all right? But here's where people get confused. In order to apply for Medicare, you do have to call Social Security because Social Security administers Medicare. So the first time you do call Social Security, you get your Medicare card, and now you contact Medicare, okay? But that's where people get like, well, I don't, I'm not gonna take my Social Security, so I'm gonna delay Medicare, and it just presents a whole bunch of issues. And like I mentioned, Medicare is not a family plan. They're individual plans. Who can get Medicare? Um, within three months of people turning 65, usually they get their Medicare red, white, and blue card. But if not, what I tell uh, you can apply uh, during uh, going to ssa.gov 
or you can call Social Security and apply for your Medicare benefits. Um, but some some people, there's no rhyme or reason. Some people get their Medicare card before others, so it's not a customary thing. But I do know that if they were collecting Social Security prior to their 65th birthday, they will get a Medicare card because Social Security already has applied for them. Um, younger than 65 with disabilities, like we mentioned, and people that have end-stage renal disease. And if I forget, ask me about end-stage renal disease programs, okay, and uh, benefits. Now we're gonna go into the parts of Medicare. So the part A is the hospital insurance. The part A, they have already contributed with the FICA taxes. As a matter of fact, we all contributing for part A right now because we paying the FICA taxes through our employee. There is no additional premium because you already pay for it. So another question, another thing that I always tell, it's not an entitlement. The government is not giving you this. You have paid for Medicare. So many of our seniors, they have contributed and paid for Medicare. And they get the part A, which is the hospital insurance, which if a person gets hospitalized and they go into, so they go to the emergency room and they get hospitalized, the first thing they get is a deductible for $1,600. And then they pay 20% of what Medicare doesn't pay. And that is for doctors that see you at the hospital or doctors that review your chart at the hospital. So that is one thing for part A, hospital insurance has deductibles and do have a 20% coinsurance because Medicare doesn't pay for everything. Medicare only pays for 80%. Then the part B of Medicare, that is your uh, your uh, medical insurance. So when you go to the doctors, to the specialist, um, when you, um, yeah, when you need to have uh, some type of therapy, that's what Part B comes into effect. There is a premium, and this one says one sixty four ninety, but that was last year. This year, people pay one seventy four ninety for their uh, Social Security Part B. The reason being is because uh, baby boomers when they came into the Medicare arena, there was not enough funding to cover all the baby boomers that were withdrawing from the Medicare program. So when the Medicare program started, there were 10 people contributing and one person uh, 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 retiring, uh, withdrawing from the program. But now it's one person contributing to 10 people withdrawing. That's where that part B kind of comes into effect because that is part of that pool of money that needs to um, be supplied so we can get and provide services for all these people. There is a deductible of $226 plus the 20% coinsurance. So for example, if a, if a doctor, if a person goes in January to their primary care physician, the first bill that they will get will be the $226. And then if the service is ten is $100, they will get a bill for $20 because Medicare pays only 80%, okay? So far, if I have any questions, let me know. But um, it, or if you want to, we can go ahead and get those questions at the end. I'll go back into the chat and uh, read those. The next thing I want to uh, talk about is uh, what happens when people come into the Medicaid arena, okay? There are two choices. They can keep original Medicare, and then they have, remember that 174.90 payment for the Part B. They need to get a Medicare uh, Medicare supplemental or what is called a Medigap insurance, which that also has a premium. And right now, if a person is new into Medicare, that premium is another $170. And then they have to get a prescription drug coverage policy for prescriptions because Medicare only covers doctors and hospitals. Okay, so the part D, as in David, is for prescriptions. So you will have three companies, three different cars, and three different payments because some Medicare plans, Medicare Part D plans, 
have premiums. This year was the first time that there was one Medicare Part D plan that had zero premium, and that was well care. So if you guys come up front, come in front of somebody that has a Part D, you guys are going to see a lot of well cares because well care was uh, with zero premium. So many people changed to that. So that's option one, original Medicare, Medicare supplemental, and a Part D. The cost of this is the $174.90 plus about $170 for this supplemental. So you are looking at almost $400 right there if they have a premium or not with the Part D. The second option is what is called the Part C of Medicare, which those are private insurance companies that have a contract with Medicare. They are regulated by Medicare and the benefits are the same as original Medicare. They cannot offer anything less. So people do not lose benefits by coming into a Medicaid Advantage plan, but they do get additional uh, 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 value added services. And usually those plans combine the part A, which is the hospital, the part B, which is the doctor, and the part D, which is the prescription. So it makes life very easy because people carry one card. If there is a premium, they only pay one premium and it's one company only. Okay. Now, what is uh, what about Medicaid Advantage and what they are? So um, the Medicaid Advantage, like I mentioned, are private insurance companies that have a contract with Medicare. But many plans offer additional benefits like the routine dental, eye exam, hearing tests, and wellness programs. They do include the prescription drug coverage. But I will tell you the cost of most of these policies are zero. And the reason being is because Medicare it's more affordable for them to pay a monthly premium to the private insurance company than for them to process the billing that comes from billing to Medicare. So for example, just to give you an example, Medicare tells the private insurance company, we're going to give you $1,200 every month for that member that you are going to be service, servicing. But from now on, you pay the bill. So that's why in my industry, I tell my clients that once they enroll into a Part C or Medicare Advantage plan, they don't need to carry their Medicare card around. They need to keep that Medicare card in a safe place at their home and carry the private insurance company. And that's what they present. Because if any emergency happens, the, the people in the emergency response, they go through people's purses and they are very familiar with the Medicare card, but not with the insurance company. And then that can generate billing problems, okay? But the biggest drive, especially in Florida, for people to select a private insurance company, a Medicare Advantage, or in the terminology of many doctors, a Medicare replacement, is because one of the benefits or the value added services that these companies offer is the credit of the Part B, the 174.90 that I mentioned. And as you and I know, many of these seniors are in a fixed income. So 164.90 uh, is $1,980 a year. And that can mean that the senior can buy food or can pay their electric bill. That is why this Part C are very are where people are going most of the time. Now, in my in uh, as being a broker, I have served people with Medicare supplementals, and I have served people with Medicaid Advantage. My job is to hear what they need, so I can guide them with the information that will help them make an, an educated decision for their needs. These plans, the Medicaid Advantage, are not one size fits all. There's people, there is, there's some clients that they, these plans work very well, and then there's some clients that these plans have become a nightmare. 
But the key point here is who talked to the person that selected the plan about what their options, who educated that person. Because usually I get to the, I get to come into the end of the um, uh, mix when there's a lot of problems going on and the doctors are having issues and the client is having issues and the insurance is not paying. So they call me in to kind of keep the peace for everybody. But that is, I want you to understand that that is the driven measure to get people, most of people in Florida to go to this Medicaid Advantage plans. Then we talk about the Part D prescription drug coverage. I don't want to touch this one too much because I don't really believe that this will be um, something that you guys experience too much because the people that you guys are going to deal the most is going to be with people with Medicaid Advantage. But there is uh, prescription only Part D and that is only offered by private insurance companies. So you cannot call Medicare and says, hey, Medicare, give me a Part D plan because they will sell you a private insurance plan. Very important to have their prescriptions uh, handy because that's what they will need to make the right decision. Okay. Making the decision, like I mentioned, the option one is the uh, Medicare, uh, the original Medicare with a supplemental in the Part D. And then option two is the Part C, Medicare Advantage, or in doctor's te terminology, the Medicare replacements. Th these are the things that seniors consider when they come in to do this. Um, uh, am I able to spend those premiums, deductibles, coinsurance, copayment? Um, what are the benefits that they offer? Uh, is vision, hearing, dental important to me? What about restricted network? Is my doctor in the network? Do I feel comfortable using this plan to manage chronic health conditions I have? So these are things that I talk to seniors about when I meet with them. There are something called chronic condition plans, and I will talk in those in just one second. Uh, and actually, financial assistance, that's the state of Florida Medicaid. There's also the Medicare Savings Program. I I am able. I have a team in my uh in my uh company that helps me if seniors are needing to apply for Medicaid low income subsidy or the Medicare Savings Program. I actually able to uh, help them. But one thing I do want to talk with you, what you guys might know, but the extra help, which is called low income subsidy, has nothing to do with Medicaid. But before this last regulation, 75% of Americans qualify for low-income subsidy, but they don't get it because they believe it's based on their Medicaid. And this year, they actually, the threshold for to qualify for low-income subsidy is higher than before. So if before 75% of Americans qualify, now we have more people that qualify that they are not applying for it. So if you ever say, hear somebody saying, you know, my medications are so expensive, Rosie, I can't pay my medications. Those are good people. Hey, you know, call Rosie and see if her team can help you apply for low income subsidy. This is not the manufacturer's way of getting the medication. This is actually a government funding program that will allow them to pay for their medications. Okay. All right. And. Um, I just want to touch really quick on this because it just happened. So you guys were probably going crazy with the annual enrollment period happens October 15 to December 7. That's the only marketable event we have in my industry. What that means is that, you know, when people just go and knock on your door, you get uh, uh, mail, it's in the TV, it's in the radio, it's in the in the uh, um, um newspaper is only October 15 to December 7. So that's why seniors get so overwhelmed because they get so bombarded with all these people calling them about this. So this is where I get, when I get a little bit more busy, but I train my seniors not to make their decisions during this time because I make sure that they get into the right program before this nightmare happens. And when that annual enrollment comes along, I say, don't pay attention to anybody. Don't answer the phone. If you have any questions, call me. 
And that's uh, one thing that I wanted to mention to you guys. Any questions that you will say, you know, that's a great question. I don't know the answer, but maybe you should call Rosie. I'm pretty sure she knows the answer. So I have a hashtag that I share with people all the time is hashtag just call Rosie. <laughs> so, and let me see what else here. And okay, that's my contact information. And with this, I just want to also touch the two things. With the Medicaid Advantage, they are not all uh, one plan fits all, like I mentioned, and there are two types, well, there are actually three types of Medicaid Advantage, private fee-for-services, HMOs, and PPOs. Private fee-for-services are very are not that popular in Florida because there's no network. So one day the doctor can say, I'll take that plan. The next day they can say, I don't take the plan. So go find somebody else. So really in Florida, the most popular plans are the HMOs and the PPOs. Difference, HMO, which stands for Health Managed Organization, has a network of providers. Within that network, they have a primary care physician network that you have to select by law. You can go into a, medic into a HMO plan without selecting a primary care physician. And that primary care physician is your gatekeeper or the person that manages this manages all your health. If you need to go to the specialist, this primary care physician will set up people to go to the specialist, okay? But some, net, some primary care physicians has networks within the network. So if somebody wants to go to Moffitt and Moffitt is not in the network of the primary care physician, then no matter what the primary care physician would like to do and like to help the person, they can send it to Moffitt because they're not in network, okay? And that's where the HMOs get a little bit um, of a nightmare. The second option is the PPOs, which is private, I mean, uh, preferred provider organizations. PPOs have a larger network of providers. They do have primary care physicians, but they're not required, they're not mandated to select the primary care physician, but they do encourage, and they don't need a referral to go to the specialist. They also have in-network services and out-of-network services. And some out-of-network services cost a little bit more because you are going out-of-network. So if everybody got my uh, information, I'm gonna stop share. And now, because that way I can see your beautiful faces. And now I'm gonna go a little bit into benefits, okay? So remember what I tell you guys that benefits are based on Medicare. The reason why my job is very, I would say, the biggest thing of my job is getting to meet people and earn their trust. But when it comes to talk about the benefits, I, there's not much that I need to know because all the plans offer the same. All the plans offer primary care physician, so much. Uh, specialist, so much. Uh, stay at the hospital, so much. When things change a little bit, it's on the value added services. Now, some plans might have the zero premium with the Part B give back plan, okay? the primary care physician uh, 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 premium, I mean, um, co-payment is zero, but if they go to the specialist, they might have a co-payment. Now, the plan that will give our consumers the, benef the beneficiaries of Medicare the most savings will be the HMOs. But there is no difference in services or benefits from an HMO to a PPO. What they will defer is the co-payments. So for example, the primary care physicians in a HMO, it'll be zero and a PPO will be zero. But a specialist perhaps on a HMO will be $10 and in a PPO will be $25. So my job really is to hear the seniors pain point and see what we want to accomplish with Medicare. Now, if a person takes very expensive prescription medications, they're always going to save more money in the HMO plans, the PPO plans. 
So that's why it's important that when I go see my seniors, I need to have the list of medications because then that lets me know how much they're going to spend in medications. The other, the, there's three benefits that, that we focus on with Medicare. The, the visit to the doctor, the primary care physician, because if the senior is, is a little sick or the senior uses, they utilize that, they probably go once a month. Hospitalized is the least utilized benefit, but everybody really is one of those things that they focus on. So some HMOs have uh, have a hospital stays that they cost them perhaps $90 per day for the first five days. And then after that, the insurance pays for it. In that PPO, there's plans that they're $295 per day for the first seven days. So again, that's where you just see the difference, not on the benefit because the hospital benefit is still covers, but in the co-payments, okay? And then the third one is the medications and the medications seniors use every single day. And that's why when the uh, insurance companies are making the yearly bids on what they're going to offer our seniors, medications are the number one way that they want to save money to our seniors because if they're not taking their medications, if they, if they have to pay for their medications, they're not taking it and then they get sick and they end up in the doctor that perhaps also ends up in the hospital. So those three things are very important. But I'm not sure if all of you guys are in Florida. Are you all in the Tampa Bay area? We're all spread out throughout Florida. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys as a broker, my job is kind of study, but you guys are going to hear that Humana Healthcare is probably the Humana Gold Plus is one of the most popular plans. Why? Because the Humana Gold Plus gives them the full 164.90. And I tell you, remember I tell you guys, guys that the Part B this year is 174.90. When Humana and all the private insurance companies presented the benefits uh, to be approved for Medicare, this new change for the Part B had not happened yet. So they they only offer the 164.90 because they did not know it was going to increase. This increase happened after they got that after they approved that. So most seniors they were not getting. Uh, by getting that credit into their social security, they were getting the full benefit of their social security. But next year, they are paying a little bit. It's about $10 that they pay for the Part B premium out of their social security check. So Humana Gold Plus, again, uh, full Part B premium, uh, $164.90, zero uh, benefits when you go to the primary care phys physicians and only $10 to a specialist. So when a senior doctor is in that network, they're going to go Humana with eyes closed. It's like, I want to go Humana Go Plus. My, my neighbor has it. My cousin has it. My mom has it. I want that plan. Now, some people, the moment I tell them that they're an HMO, they go, I don't want HMOs. I don't want to hear anything about HMOs. I want PPOs. Okay. Humana also now has a PPO that gives the, the credit of the Part B premium. Okay. And um, it is the Humana choice, but there is a number that they go by in every insurance company. And I know you probably don't get to see this. But in every insurance company, at the little tiny bottom corner, usually on the left-hand side, there's a number. And that, for Humana, that PPO choice ends up in 393. So that's a new plan for this year. So when somebody wants to have all the, you know, the name, the Humana brand and everything, but they don't want to deal with the referrals of the Gold Plus, and they want the freedom to go to the specialist they want, but they want the Part B premium, they go to this Humana Choice Part B back, okay? So my number one this year really was the Humana products. Uh, the second one I do sell, and this was gonna talk about the chronic conditions. So chronic condition plans usually have two reasons people that they are Medicare and Medicaid eligible. 
So remember, Medicare is the federal government, government and Medicaid is the state health. They are plans that offer benefits just for those people. So you remember what I tell you that people pay for the Part B premium. When they have Medicaid, Medicaid pays for that. Remember I mentioned that some HMOs have a, a specialist a co-payment of $10. Medicare and Medicaid people do not have that payment because Medicare pays first, which is the private insurance company. They get, no, actually the private insurance company gets paid by Medicare and now they also get paid by Medicaid. So if they have to stay in the hospital, it's zero also. And they actually get even additional benefits. So if they get dental benefits on the HMO per se, uh, a person that does not have Medicaid in the Humana Gold Plus, in my area, by the way, in my area, is $2,000, up to $2,000 coverage. On the Medicare Medicaid, they get up to $6,000 coverage. They do also have HMOs and PPOs in the Medimedis. Those are called dual special needs plans. So if a person is having trouble or concerns when they don't get a referral from the primary care physician and they have Medicare and Medicaid, we might need to switch them to a PPO plan instead of an HMO plan. Their value added services will lower a little bit, okay? But you give something to take that freedom. So my job is really kind of explaining that to them. One thing I don't, I don't want to overwhelm you with all this information. At the end of the day, I just want you to remember, just go rosy and <laughs> just go rosy. <laughs> and then the other just that the other chronic uh, conditions and with this, I will finish. It's sometimes people have what is um, it's called CSMPs. Remember, DSMP is for dual eligibles. CSMPs is for chronic uh, special needs plan. Some companies have COPD chronic conditions plans or diabetes and heart condition plans. And there's one more, diabetes chronic. Yeah, uh, uh, so there's three. So chronic, uh, heart, diabetes, and, um, and, the, and the COPD. But not all companies have COPD plans, okay? So the only health question I'm allowed to ask when I sit with my seniors is any health related questions that allows me to see if they qualify for any of these chronic condition plans. So if, for example, they tell me, you know, I can't pay for my insulin. I'm going to be looking at the chronic insulin plan because of the, because of the savings. And I'm just gonna move slow it down really quick because my computer is kind of going dead. And I that, okay. And let me sit over here. All right. All right. So that's the chronic condition. And then uh the heart, diabetes, and and um and COPD. But this year you guys are going to hear about the newest Medicare advantage, which is gold kidney. Gold kidney. Now they specialize in people with end stage renal disease. They are a fee for service plan, but they're like an HMO open access, which that means this is an HMO plan, but does not need a referral. So sometimes people have this card that says HMO POS. POS stands for point of sale or point of service. And bottom line, what that means is that they don't need a referral as long as they stay in the, within the network. But because Gold Kidney is new to Florida, they don't have a network. So as long as the doctor says, I'm, a, I'm, I'm billing the insurance company, they get paid the same amount they get paid for Medicare. As I'm actually kind of helping them out to build their network in my area. But this Gold Kidney, their marketing, uh, the, their avatar or the people that they are servicing are people with end-stage renal disease that they receive in dialysis. And some of the statistics that it has been mind-blowing for me, a person with dialysis is spent about $125,000 a year 
and they are responsible for 20% of that because not even Medicare or the private insurance company pays for that 20% dialysis. Gold Kidney has a plan for, chron for uh, this called the dialysis plan. They will pay the 20% that Medicare doesn't pay. So if you know somebody in dialysis that some of the doctors are having a high, uh, as you may know, some doctors actually, if the, if the, if the, uh, let me just politically correct. I'm trying to think of the words that politically correct will come here, but, uh, and are you guys familiar with capitated? You guys don't know. Have you guys heard of cap capitation? Okay. Okay. So, so Rosie, question. Yes. Um, with the 15 minutes that we have left, okay, can so you delve a little bit deeper into like our biggest plans? So Freedom, Humana, okay. United Healthcare and Care Plus and WellCare. We just sometimes get questions from patients and from providers about, you know, benefits associated with these major plans. So okay. with the time that we have left, could you go okay. a little bit deeper into that? Sure, sure, sure. So pretty much... So most of them are the, and you guys are the primary care physician's offices, right? So across the board, all these Medicaid Advantage plans, primary care physicians' co-payments are zero. So if you see that somebody's paying $5 or $10, they're not in a Medicaid Advantage. They're usually in a group plan, okay? Um, I believe, okay, in five-star, uh, Humana is five stars, um, uh, Freedom and Optima is five stars too. And I believe uh, uh, Freedom and Optima, no, Optima pays $10 for the specialist. Well care is about 15, I believe. But well care is one of the lowest rating plans that um, is coming in my area, at least. Some areas they did get a a below average rating. So some members receive a letter stating that they need to find a new Medicaid Advantage because that well care plan is not meeting the standards and they get a letter and they have to look for another plan. Okay, so you say Freedom of Care Plus are actually owned by Humana. So the big difference between Care Plus and Humana is just the co-payments for the specialists. $10 in Humana for the specialist, $20 co-payment. And in the dental, Humana has a $2,000, up to $2,000 coverage in dental, and Care Plus only has about $1,000. Over-the-counter medication is kind of the same event. The benefits are the same. Um, so we talk, well, Care Optima, Care Plus, which other one was the one? Freedom, Humana, UHC, Care Plus, Well Care. Okay, so UHC, Humana, uh, United Healthcare, they are going to tell you over and over they do not offer the premium back, the Part B premium for people that they're not on the Medicare Medicaid program. What that means is the seniors will get billed for the one seventy four ninety. They will not get that credit. So. United has the largest network, and we know that most of doctors do accept uh, United, okay? But when it comes to the consumer, United is one plan that they might end up paying a little bit more because they have to pay that Part B premium. And United has made it very clear that they are never going to offer a Part B back, a premium back, okay? So they will never get the credit. By the way, Optima does give the credit also back into the social, into the seniors. So the reason why this is, is like I mentioned, it's uh, the once one offers, because because uh, Freedom and Optima was the one that started with the Part B premium and nobody else was offering the Part B premium. That was about seven or 10 years ago, okay? And then it became so popular that everybody went over there that now Humana offers it and every other single plan offers it. Care Plus offers it. So all these plans have a regular plan that will not give you the Part B premium uh, credit. And then the, the flagship plan that they call it, flagship plan, 
which is the one that gives them the Part B premium, okay? And I think that's about, I wanna open some questions too, to see if I if there's anything that I can answer for you guys. Oh, give me a scenario of what was it that you guys perhaps run into at one time and it says, you know, I, I don't know how to help this person. Have you guys had any plan specific information or questions come from patients or office champions or even providers? Now, the other thing is, since you guys don't have a license, you can always go to medicare.gov. And, and if you want to learn about what's offered in this plan and this other plan, anybody can go into medicare.gov. The thing is with me, I, I tell people I'm an addition to the medicare.gov because I'm local. So I know what doctor takes this plan. For example, in your case, you only took those plans that you mentioned, right? Um, so I will know from now on if I'm dealing with that office uh, that is one of your offices, those are the plans that they are going to accept. So if somebody's coming with another plan, I'm going to say, well, this office doesn't accept that plan. Okay. But there's, like I mentioned, there's really not that much of difference in benefits because all the benefits are the same across the border, across the aisle with, with when it comes to the companies because they're the same as Medicare. The only thing that changes is the co-payments. Um, the, the, things, the things get a little bit um, hectic for our seniors if perhaps they want, they had a cardiac, that a cardiologist that they have seen for 20 years, they change the plan. And for example, they say that doctor is in the plan. They change the plan and now they cannot see the cardiologist because the cardiologist just dropped the insurance plan. Um, that is where things get a little bit, <laughs> that's when good seniors get a little bit frustrated with people and they go, oh, they, the other thing that happens at the beginning of the year too, if they switch plans and they go to the pharmacy and the pharmacy doesn't have the new uh, card information from their ID, they run the bill to the old policy that terminated last year. And now they're charging the full amount of medications to the seniors because they haven't updated the ID. So those are the things that generate kind of people getting upset about Medicaid Advantage. Other than that, everybody's happy. Um, most of them offer some type of silver sneakers of fitness, oh, uh, silver and fit, which that is that gym membership that some of our active seniors uh, love to do. So they all offer that. Um, they all offer some vision cover, some dental coverage, uh, over-the-counter medications. They all offer that but some of them may offer $25 a month. Uh, the other ones offer $30 a month. Um, like I mentioned, some of them will offer $1,000, other will offer $2,000 in the dental. Um, I have a question, Rosie. Go ahead. With the United Healthcare PPO, um, we're coming across patients that are being assigned to specific providers under the PPO, but they go to a different provider. Um, uh-huh. What can we do about that? Because the present provider that they are assigned to, we're responsible for their care. Uh -huh. And when we call the insurance to switch them, they say they don't have to be switched because they are a PPO. Um, so they can go anywhere they want, even yeah, though they're but... assigned to Dr. K, they mm -hmm. can go to Dr. B, C, and it doesn't matter. So we try to switch them so it could be for under that that doctor they see, mm -hmm. and um, the insurance just doesn't want to. Sometimes they just say that it's not needed. They'll tell the the patient that that's not needed because they're PPO. So, so my, we can. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is hang up and call again, <laughs> because in a PPO you can assign you you are able to assign you. There's not a PPO in United unless I know I don't know it might not be a Medicare plan. But in the United PPO, you have to select a primary care physician. It's okay. not 
is not meant. They, they, they do select one, but they tell them they don't have to switch to the one they're saying they're seeing at this time um, because they're a PPO, that it's not necessary. Yeah, no, in a person like that, remember these people are just call uh, uh, people that they answer the phone calls. So my suggestion is uh, hang up and call again. If they are my clients, I am able to go into the system and change the doctor's information. Uh, mm -hmm. But fortunately, not uh, United doesn't do an agent of record change or anything like that. So perhaps if you can, if they know who their agent is, call the agent and have the agent go into the portal. It, and switch it. And switch it. And it's really simple. That's this, a good idea. Yeah, this year, many companies uh, gave me the opportunity that if I'm the agent of record of this person, I can go into my portal and change the and change the doctor. Uh, a thing that you might need to, it'll be helpful to you guys, is find the PCP number. Each company has a different PCP number, which is not the doctor, I guess the N, N, the provider number that is the national provider number. No, like Humana has their own PCP. CarePlus have their own PCP. Uh, WellCare has their own PCP. So some of the things that you might want to do is make a list of the doctors that you're servicing, what PCP numbers they are. So when you call the doctor or uh, in the insurance company, or when you help the agent um, uh, uh, select the doctor, you have the ID number because we go by ID numbers. Uh, now in U United Healthcare, there's many plans, um, but I don't not not all the like they have different networks and different plans. Um, but I, if as a PPO, uh, the HMO HMO providers are not all in the PPO, but all the HMOs are in the PPO. Uh, yeah, the PPOs are not all in the HMO, but all the HMO providers are in the PPO network. But it does have, it does change networks. So again, if they have, that's that's a solution, call, the, call their agent. Thank you, Minerva, for that question. <laughs> Thank you. It was a good um, advice. Thank you. Hopefully they'll know who the agent is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody else that might have some other questions? Okay, let's see. There's something in here. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, hi, Rosie. I'm Mari. Okay, um, Mari. In the in the website that you mentioned on CMS, is there listed like the plan and the benefits? In the Medicare.gov, like, yes, yes. Okay. So, so you will see the transportation. How many? You will see the vision, or you will see. Yes. everything listed okay yeah so for example you you go if you go into medicare.gov there is a second tab that says find plans and you click on that and then it's going to ask you yeah exactly and then it's going to ask you um um if you want to add your medication or if you want to just be a guest yeah health plans and then find health plans then you put the zip code for example, put 33602, continue, and then go see where it says Medicare Part C, the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then find plans. And then you go, I don't get help from any of these programs. And then next. Okay. Uh, no, they just put no for right now. So I just want you to see. And see now you have all the plans there. And then you can hit it. Uh, you can um, scroll down a little bit more and see what okay. plan details. Yeah, but and it doesn't yeah. tell you how many, when it says, for example, transportation. Then, for example, the, then you're going to have to like select and go into the plan details and, then the and details. download okay. the summary of benefits. Download the summary of benefits. But that's a little bit more extra. Uh, go down a little bit more uh, and see at the bottom, bottom, says summary of benefits and you can download that perfect More okay down. yeah thank you for getting uh, see what it says so, so um well summary rating drugs plans start rating 
uh, view extra benefits. But there should be, a, go, go where it says view or more extra benefits. But if you ever, please, um, if you ever had any of the questions that you want to know, how much is, what one is bringing, my, I have a system where I, it's very similar to the Medicare.gov, but it gives me, like, this person has so many transportation, this other person has um, this much on dental, this much in vision. But there mm -hmm. should be something, uh, see where it says benefits and costs? Maybe that's when the summary of benefits is. But you, there is a, um, and scroll all the way down, because there is a thing that says, click here for the summary of benefits, and you can download that. All right. Yeah, thank you. Well, Another well, question. Go ahead. On the gold kidney uh, plan that you mentioned briefly, is what company is that, Humana? No, it's actually called gold kidney. But okay, I said, know you mentioned you guys do not accept that plan yet, but that no, might no, be no. something that you guys going to eventually, eventually that's probably going to change at one point. I'm telling you, they're coming back very strong for, they're, new, they're the newest people in the blog right now, but they are coming strong to Florida. Okay. Huh? But, Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a question for you, Rosie. Hi, I'm Amanda. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, so with the PPO and the HMO for the Medicare Advantage plan, we want to see our seniors um, every quarter this year. And mm -hmm. the question I'm getting a lot is, will there be a co-payment so they can, can they see their provider as many times as they want per year for their primary with for no co-payment? For the Medicare physician, yes, yes because most of the PPO plans are zero co-payments. I, I, I don't, let me rephrase that back. <laughs> there are some PPOs that may have a $5 co-payment or $10 co-payment, but it's because they're old PPOs that those seniors have not reviewed their policies. And you know, seniors do not like to change, okay? So that's an old policy that they have because they haven't reviewed their policies to be switched to the plan that pays zero. Another thing also, remember how I tell you that uh, there's in-network and out-of-network in the PPO, and if they go out of ne network, they pay more money. The Humana, what, the Humana plan that I mentioned, PPO, that gives the premium back, and most of most of the PPOs this year, they can go out on network and pay the same in-network services. So if for any reason, a senior wants to see you as the primary care physician, but that you are not in the network, the doctor is not in the network, they will pay zero to go see you and they will pay that zero as many times as you need to see them. So easy way to do, look at their card, ask for their card and look what it says PCP cost and it says zero, then you say, yeah, your payment, is, your premium is zero. And you can, if you need to see them every quarter, they pay what that is, what that PCP copay is, zero. Now the okay, problem, so it'll say it on their card? Oh yeah, it, the, on the, okay. if you look at their, medic, if you look at their uh, insurance card, they gives you the, primary care physician co-payment, the specialist co-payment, and the emergency co-payment. Those three things are in the ID cards of the seniors. And that's the Medicare card? That, no, the, that's the, no, the Medicare card doesn't the have insurance. That. The insurance card does. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for that question. Susan, I know you unmuted at one point. Did you have a question or was it answered? No, well, it was about the PPO. I have the same issues, but I have that issue with Humana as well. That they tell the patients they can they don't have to switch. And I've actually gotten them on the phone and we try to switch and it doesn't work. And it's been, yeah, a nightmare <laughs> to yeah, get yeah. change PPO to their preferred provider. Yes, and sometimes just remember, um, people in the in their phones, like the call centers, their their people, their their turnaround in the call centers are so fast mm -hmm. that these people, you know, they just want to get you off the off the phone. So they easy. The first thing they tell you is no, 
So I'm kind of one of those very resist, resilient, persistent people. Hey, I wrote a book on persistency and, pers and, uh, res and resilience. And um, I call. And if it has to be two, three times, I do it. But I know it's a pain in the neck to do it. Well, that's because, yeah, you have the, the patient on the phone with you. And sometimes mm -hmm. they just say, forget it. Yes, I'm not, yes. You know, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, as far as the PCP, like if they have a PCP they've been seeing for a long time, they're reassigned to the doctor that I have. They really would like to stay with their other PCP, you know, so we try to help them get that corrected. But, you know, you were talking about the PCP number, and I know that they like that. Sometimes I can go online and find that, but is there some place where you can, if it's not a doctor that I don't know, you know, where I can find that number? Um, if you send me an email, I usually go into my portal for Humana, if or if Humana or United or whatever. If you give me the name of the doctor and the location, I can go in there and find out. And I also I will also actually need to have the plan number, the plan information. Um, so even if you want to just take a picture of the the uh, uh, the um, client's card and there's no there's no private information in there but if you want to text that to me and they say i need this doctor uh uh id number for this company i'll go into my portal get that for you and send it to you because again you can try the first question is to get engaged the uh, uh agent of record because we get paid every month to service the seniors for as long as the seniors are alive. That is my job. My job is to make sure that my senior has the doctor they want and every single broker or agent should follow that guideline because they get paid for service that, servicing that senior. So, hey, who's your agent? And yeah, they don't They don't really seem to know that. And, and a lot of them will call, they see the ads on TV, the one eight call one 800 number to get free insurance, blah, blah, you know, and it, and it, and they, that's what they call and they have no idea who, who they've yeah. talked to. So that's an issue. A lot of times they just don't know because they yeah. talked to some generic person, Joe Namath advertising yeah. or whatever that came up, you know, on the, on the TV while they were watching it. So, yeah. Yeah, but if anything like that happens, just shoot me an email or a text message and I'll see. I'm pretty much available most of the time. So text is faster to get to me. A phone call, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but I will get back with you. Um, but an email or a text will be fast. Okay, thank you. Was that good enough, my dear? Yeah, that's just, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody has run into these same same issues it's just frustrating sometimes to to try to try to get them what they need right. you know if I would like for them to establish with this the doctor that I'm working with but that's just not always going to happen they they really want to stay with another doctor so. yes yes and and that happens you know seniors like nobody likes changes although change is the only constant thing in life but especially our seniors they just hate that I mean sometimes they even pay thousands and thousands more dollars, but they don't like to change. So my job is to earn their trust first to be able to, for them to say, okay, I'll trust Rosie, just do whatever you need to do, Rosie. Um, but yeah, change is difficult for them. It's just that part of their their psyche or something. So, And, and I'm actually, I'm in the panhandle, I'm in Pensacola. So if I, I mean, that wouldn't matter. You would have access to look for information regardless. Yes. Mm -hmm. I will just need the zip code to go in there and do because my my state is my uh, license is for the whole state of Florida. So I actually can sell in any any state. And if you guys know of anybody turning 65 that you know you're going to be working with and you might want an agent that does care and have that information where you can call Rosie and say, hey, just switch the primary care physician, please, for me, please, by all means, I would really be honored that you refer those clients to me. Um, because to me, my clients are my, my, my family. Um, and I'm not one of those agents that just sells them a policy and disappears. I really, um, part of their lives. Um, and the thing is, because I also, they're seeing their, their, their caregivers are turning 65 at 1.2. So I'll sell, I, sometimes I have served three generations, mom, daughter, and granddaughter. So that's how long I've been in the business. So. Is that is that enough? Uh, was that good? Uh, was that 
something that you guys took away and were able to learn? Yeah, did you guys have any additional questions? Did you learn some stuff? And I know I have this a question I about address changes. Go ahead. Like if a patient moves, you know, four hours away um, and they notify the insurance that they have moved, do they not make them change providers? Do they allow them to stay with their provider even though they don't see them? Well, so depending on what plan, right? But mm -hmm. technically, uh, this Medicaid Advantage are based on counties. Mm -hmm. So if they move out of a county, now they have to re they have to check another policy they, uh, that works in that county, okay? Sometimes the PPOs are regional and sometimes the PPOs are statewide. So if you have somebody that runs into changing an address, they do should be a good candidate for me to review their policy on their new area. Um, mm -hmm. But um, once they change it with Medicare and the insurance gets a hold of, they know that they're no longer in the service area, they will get a letter that will give them about three months, two and a half months, three months to switch. And if they don't switch, the insurance company will, will uh, disenroll them. I've had one that's a uh, well care HMO and she has been on my panel for two and a half years and she has never lived here. She's I'm in Bay County. She's in Duval County, which is a four hour drive away. But that's why I was wondering, like she, her address and everything says she lives in Duval County, so but she she's can, still she's on my panel. State, a state. So have you able, have you been able to get a hold of her and find out why she I've, I've called her about 40 times in mm -hmm. the past two and a half years and I can't get her and she gets her mail because that's her address. So I just and didn't know. I thought they would change their provider once they change their city. They but. should. So I don't know why she will do that because why is she doing, you know, but there's some people that I don't, you hear some stuff. So have a lot of empathy and it's yeah. like, oh, well, she's only 20 something. So she's not a senior. She's, you know, she's tw like 27 or 28. She's not very old. So mm -hmm. that's why I just can't get a hold of her. <laughs> and usually that age bracket that gets that Medicare is due to some type of uh, mental health condition. Mm -hmm. So that might be the other reason um, on that. Uh, the other thing I do want to mention, and I'm sorry, I know I'm taking, but this is really important. So Medicaid, a lot of Medicaid people are getting letters stating that they're no longer qualified for Medicaid and they're getting kicked out of the dual special needs plans. And it's because during COVID, anybody that had applied for Medicaid got approved even though they did not qualify. So now since we are three years after COVID, Medicaid is doing the recertification because every Medicaid person needs to certify at least twice a year, every six months. OK, so now all these people are getting this letter that they need to recertify. But because they haven't recertified in, in three years, they dump those, they throw those things in the trash and they don't do the recertification. So right now in my industry, we're running with people that now are out of their Medicaid dual eligible plans because they no longer qualify for Medicaid just because they did not reapply. So that's why my team created uh, a specific person that all she does all day long is applying for Medicaid for people. Uh, but you are going to run because there is, I think it's like a 45% of people in Florida that qualify for Medicaid that got kicked out of Medi they kicked out of Medicaid because they did not reapply. Okay. Well, Anything thank you else? guys. I'm... Okay, I think we're good, Rosie. Yeah, no problem. And find me on LinkedIn. All my social media platforms are on the Rosie Paulson. But thank you so much for the opportunity. You guys make a huge change to our community. So keep on um, doing the best that you can because you are our community changers. So thank you so much, guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye, All right. Bye bye. Thank you, Rosie. You're welcome. Bye-bye.